This video is sponsored by Squarespace, more on that later. This is very odd framing, and it may or may not have to do with the title of this video, and the fact that I don't want to give any spoilers. I am currently not in my bedroom. Where could I possibly be? Who knows? I never properly introed this vlog, so I'm doing it now. Obviously, I'm really excited about this one, but it is an odd vlog. It starts off with some art footage, so like grab your sketchbook, you know, sit down, get ready to relax, uh, and then there's a lot of talking stuff. I take you through bits of this month, but nothing super exciting or crazy. There's lots of chit chat, so I think it's a great video to keep you company while you're working or doing art. So whatever it is, you know, you want to do, you want to grab a snack or grab your sketchbook, grab some homework, whatever. Uh, this is a great video for that. Before we get into it, I want to thank my patrons. Your names are on screen. Thank you so much for being a patron. I appreciate you. You guys are truly the best. Uh, it's not March anymore, but here was <laughs> the March Patreon postcard and sticker uh, in case that intrigues you. I haven't designed April yet, but that will be coming. And if you sign up, you can get them when they come out. <laughs> we also do fun stuff like early access to art, and an exclusive video, an exclusive podcast. I also do originals, so there's all sorts of fun stuff. I also have a $1 tier on here on YouTube memberships, just like a tip jar, um, and everyone gets their name. Shout it out when I do, you know, the little thanks to my patrons. So if you want to support me and you want something fun out of it, that's a great way to do it. It directly supports me, so it's like really great. <laughs> and I appreciate it, thank you. But yeah, I'm not gonna talk too much. We're just gonna get right into the vlog, so enjoy. Hey friends, welcome to the voiceover. We're starting with an art process, but the rest of the video is bits from the rest of the month, so I won't do too much talking now, since there, there's gonna be plenty of it <laughs> later on. But let me tell you about this painting. Um, so this is the March Patreon postcard. I usually try to do something themed a bit, you know, like a bit related to the month. Sometimes that's not applicable and it'll just be whatever I'm into artistically at the time. But I try to do it vaguely themed when I can for the postcard and sticker. I just think it's fun and cute. Obviously we're getting into spring. Uh, and when I think of spring, I think of flowers. I had this photo of these flowers from what I could have sworn was like the beginning of this year, maybe even the beginning of March, and that they were like spring flowers. The thing about Florida is, is there's flowers blooming all the time. Um, but I, I thought that these were spring flowers, but my phone says that this photo is from October, um, which is crazy. But yeah, I, d I don't know what kind of flowers these are. If anyone does know, please tell me because I would, I would love to know. I'm very obsessed with them. They look so perfect and pretty, like they look fake. They're so perfect um, and I want to eat them. They look very edible to me. And for some reason, I don't, I can't remember. It's so foggy now, but they remind me of something very, very specific from my childhood. Um, like there was some sort of like this flower, like this exact flower that I used to see somewhere but they weren't normal fake flowers. Like they weren't fabric flowers. They weren't, like the closest thing that I can think of of what they might be reminding me of is like candy, like on on cakes or like frosting flowers, but I don't think it's that. Um, I know it's not, I'm, it's not making me think of ceramic flowers. So I have no clue what it is that I'm remembering, but it's definitely these flowers and they scratch something very specific for me in my brain and I love them. I wish I could unlock the memory. I wish I could remember what it is that they remind me of. But I saw these in my neighborhood and I was like, yeah, uh, I need I need to take some pictures because it was really pretty. Whenever I do a process like this, I always go into it hoping for it to be like a very easy, simple process. Um, like for this time specifically, I was definitely trying to go in with a more simplified style. Like I purposely was going to stylize it, but I feel like I'm just kind of bad at simplifying, <laughs> especially when I'm working from a photo. Like I can't seem to see past detail and see the bigger picture sometimes. So I always end up doing way more work than I really intend with these kinds of pieces. Like I really wanted it to be a bit more blocky, um, like distinct color regions, very shape heavy. You know what I mean? Like very um, color blocked. That's one of the reasons that I like specifically used the Arteza gouache for this painting was because I can specifically pull tubes of the specific colors that I want because there's so many colors um, and I'm not super reliant on mixing them. You know, I can just pull straight from the tube so I don't feel the need to do a whole bunch of blending, which will lead to me wanting to be more real realistic, um, if that makes sense. <laughs> it's a whole process. Um, but yeah, of, of course I ended up doing, I, I was way more realistic um, and much more blended than I originally intended. But I was still able to keep myself from going too hard on the realism and the blending. I mean, I, I think I went hard on the blending, but the colors were so similar that it wasn't didn't take a long time. I didn't really worry too much about shading 
were getting it exactly the same as the photo, I definitely took liberties. I was still able to keep things somewhat simple, obviously simplified like the background and stuff. Uh, it, ended, it ended up still being like a, a pretty easy process. It wasn't too difficult or very time consuming. It was a very enjoyable process. And I ended up with a piece that I genuinely absolutely love. I think it turned out so pretty. I'm so proud of it. Obviously, like I said, I did them in gouache. I did a pink acrylic underpainting. I have, I, I've been doing that for a really long time, but I feel like lately I've not lost it necessarily, but I've done some paintings that I'm like, why did I bother with the underpainting? Like it's not doing anything. And I feel like sometimes I, and I don't think there has to be a purpose for everything that I do, but I think sometimes I'm like, yeah, I really could have just skipped the underpainting. Um, and so I wanted to do an underpainting that actually was useful. <laughs> and I, I know when I did the piece at the top of the month, I know that I, there was a, a reference, I was referencing something that I had done. Um, I think maybe an old sketchbook piece, but it could have been the scrub J piece. Um, but it was something that I had done and I had had that feeling that I had messed it up. Like, oh, I, I didn't utilize the underpainting. Um, so I know I was referencing a specific piece that I had done, but now it's, it's basically been like a whole month. So I don't quite remember, but I do know that I specifically wanted to like leave more of the pink underpainting this time. Um, I didn't want the background to go right up to the edge of the flower. I wanted it to peek through and I did that. I definitely think I achieved that specific look that I was going for. I feel like the pink is actually useful. It's doing something. I, and then of course with the gouache, I had another pink neon there that I put back over into, into the flowers. So it peeks through multiple places. I think it ties together really nicey, nicely, nicey. Oh, uh, I think it's cute. I really like it. But yeah, that is the art process. So let me tell you a bit more about this month and then I'm just gonna let you enjoy the art until we get further into the vlog. Cause I, like I said, I'm gonna talk a lot. First of all, I can't believe March is already over. Uh, it's so alarming to me. Like, I feel like I say that every month, but this month specifically, I, I can't believe it. I felt like I had all these like plans and goals and I just did not achieve a single one of them. Uh, Cause it literally feels like this month has lasted a few days. I, I just, I can't believe it's already over. It's upsetting. It's like I slept through it or something. Um, it's just annoying. I'm feeling like I'm just constantly behind and unable to ever catch up with myself and time and life and just all the things on my plate. I can never get ahead. And it's just frustrating. Cause I, I don't know. It's just, I feel like this month I totally lost. Like I didn't gain any ground and it's frustrating me. On the upside, I did get a few moments here and there throughout this month to myself. Um, some chances to recharge, some fun socialization. All of that was super needed and super, super nice. I'm feeling, I wouldn't say rested, but I do feel a little bit more recharged after this month. I'm definitely excited to really buckle down in April and get the graphic novel done, get some stuff set up for myself that may or may not be related to the plot of this video. I'd love April to be like a major progress month, like get some work done so I can reach some milestones really grind through stuff um, to get to the other side. But yeah, this month was just a mess. Not necessarily a bad thing, just very weird, very discombobulated. And then of course, Stardew came out with a new update that I couldn't resist. So I started a new farm, um, but it's just a distraction right now that I really can't afford to have. So I, I'm not allowing myself to play it. I just have this farm waiting for me and it's so tempting. Um, but yeah, been a weird, weird month, a good one. I had a good time, definitely good but I'm, I'm definitely excited for April. I'm really excited to really buckle down. I feel like I've been saying that every month this year so far, but again, it's like, where's time going? It's scary how fast 2024 is going by. Again, that's something that we say every year, but I'm worried. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited for next month, but that's it. Let me, let me shut up. I'm gonna let you enjoy the rest of this art process peacefully without me yapping um, until the next parts of the video where I yap some more. <laughs>
the fourth wow the fourth so obviously in the last vlog a lot of what i talked about was condo slash house hunting and obviously it didn't turn out well because i'm still here um it was really difficult very disappointing and i decided to stop take a break for at least a couple of months but more realistically like a year and that still holds true i'm not back to house hunting. But this morning, I'm, I'm ready to be heard again. I'm gonna go look at a office space to rent. I have considered finding like a studio to rent many months before I even started thinking about moving out. It's been something that I've looked into for at least like maybe six months to a year now. Art studio, like I am not in an area where that is a thing. Um, art studios are all like, you know, they're in bigger cities. So they're all like, there's a couple places where they are, they are available, but they're an hour away from me. No matter which one I go to, they're an hour away. Obviously I'm not gonna be renting a studio space an hour away. Like that doesn't make sense. Um, and I did try to look for like kind of other options near me, like kind of retail or office spaces, but they were all way too big, way too expensive. Just like not what I needed, way out of the realm of possibility for me. So that was something that I totally wrote off as an as an option. Um, and I just figured like I would just have to get a place that had enough room to have a studio. And then that didn't happen. So I was like, oh man, I'm gonna like, I, I don't wanna keep living with my entire life in one room, but I'll do what I have to do. And then I was on Facebook Marketplace and I saw that there was a like uh, office space for rent for a very reasonable price. So I messaged and they happened to have one come available like yesterday. And so we're seeing it this morning. I'm seeing it this morning. And it's not like, it's about 200 square feet. It's got two windows. I'm keeping my hopes high, but based on the luck that I've had, <laughs> expectations are low. I'm definitely expecting this to fall through just based on previous experience, <laughs> my educated guess. But I am definitely like hoping that this works out. Um, It's not ideal, right? It's definitely not like I would prefer to have be, be moving somewhere. So I think this is gonna work with, I, I hope if this works out, I think it'll be really good. And I can do like a six month lead which is like, I don't know, to me it just seems super like chill and low risk and an ideal temporary bandage solution. Like it's a good backup for the fact that I can't move out. So I'm really excited and I really, you know, I don't think many spaces for this price will be coming up near where I live. So I'm really hoping that this one is just will work. So far, I don't see why it wouldn't. And since I'm not buying it, um, I don't see how there would be like any surprises like there were when I was trying to buy condos. So hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully it works out. The big thing that would kind of, um, as of now, of what I know now, the biggest thing that would make it like kind of not viable would be just if all the walls are like paper thin and I can hear conversations on the other side of me. I couldn't like film in those conditions, but we'll see, we'll see. I'm excited, I really hope it works. I would love to not have to live my entire life in one room anymore and constantly be tripping over myself and breaking stuff and i just think it'd be i think it'd be really good for me i just am craving some sort of change some sort of shaking up in my life without kind of the goal of like i i thought that this year at some point i would be moving out and without that kind of like goal or like reward or something to work towards it kind of feels like you know what am i doing like what what am i doing at all and i kind of just want something different happening to kind of wake me up from that funk you know what i'm saying like knock me out of the cycle but hopefully this works. I really, really hope. Like, it would just be so nice. It would just be so nice, even like just temporarily, just for something different to happen. So like I said, hopes high, expectations low. We'll see.
Let's take a brief moment to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that allows entrepreneurs, creatives, freelancers, etc., to make a website that allows them to stand out and succeed online. It's a platform that really enables you to do anything you might need to do. Engaging with an audience, monetizing your content, selling goods, and even just representing yourself professionally. Designing a website can be super intimidating. It objectively is hard to do, but Squarespace makes it really easy and accessible. So even if you have no experience, it's really easy to make a website that represents you, fits your needs, and looks really beautiful. They have flexible website templates, so they have a bunch of templates that you can choose from with all sorts of use cases in mind, but you don't just have to stick with the specific template. They're all customizable, and you can use Fluid Engine to customize them, which is a next-generation website design software built right into Squarespace, so it makes it just so, so easy. It is literally a drag-and-drop tool. You can customize literally every detail. You can make it work for desktop or mobile, add buttons, different features, slideshows, anything that your imagination desires, you can do. You can put all of your different websites on Squarespace, including your shop. Squarespace has all the tools that you need to start selling online, whether it's digital goods, physical goods, services, you can do everything on Squarespace. You can also use it as a point of sale. Just connect a Square Reader to the Squarespace app, and then you can keep track of your orders, your inventory, customer information. You can keep it all in sync and stay way more organized. If you are creative, if you're trying to start your business, you want to represent yourself more professionally, start a business, freelance, etc., 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 I think Squarespace is really the best place for creatives to represent themselves online. If that's something that interests you, make sure that you check out Squarespace. You can go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and whenever you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash lilstarnard for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring. Now let's get back into the vlog. I am working on, I just had a call, what's today, Wednesday? Monday night, I was on a call for a opportunity that I'm going to be applying for. It's nothing major. It hopefully won't take a huge amount of my time if I do get it, but I have a feeling I'm not gonna get it because I looked over the application last night and I don't feel like super strong and confident. It's again, kind of running, this is crooked. Um, I'm kind of running into a lot of the same issues that I did the last time I applied for something, which is you kind of need to already be a successful experienced artist. And also you kind of need to like prove that you care, like that you've done, th like <laughs> that you, have a, a cause or whatever, which is cool, except for the fact that like, just because I'm not like, I don't know, like I don't have time to be doing things doesn't mean I don't care. It's, so the project is uh, painting murals for storm drains. Lawn people just got here. Let me move over so they can't see me. Lawn people are my worst nightmare, I swear to God. They're always here. Okay, anyways, mural. So it's painting murals on storm drains and it's about like only rain down the drain, helping the environment, helping the drain system, etc. It's being put on the city, but it's a pilot program. It's also technically not my county. <laughs> it's just like the only county that has like an art thing near me. It's very close to me. It's the neighboring county, but I just have a feeling that I'm like not going to be qualified. So I was on a call and it didn't seem that serious. Like, am I shaking the camera? Probably. It didn't really seem that serious. The guy was really, really nice. And I was like, oh, I feel like confident. I feel like I can definitely do this. But and then I looked at their application. And I was like, why are things always so serious? Like, it's not like they're paying a lot. It's not like it's in a mural, like a, it is a mural, but it's like small and it's on the ground. It's not gonna require a bunch of extra equipment or blowing things up or a projector or anything. It's like easy. <laughs> So why are they making it like so hard to, I don't know. I'm just frustrated. I would love to have an opportunity that is actually accessible to people who aren't already successful. Okay, so please provide a short biography. Is that supposed to be first person or third person? Is an art bio third person? In the third person, okay. I'm gonna tell them my county so they know I'm very close. Al is an artist based in Florida. She works with a variety of mediums and subjects. And the other thing is it's like, I want the, especially because I'm not a super established traditional artist. I don't have this kind of stuff down pat and I'm not like, I don't have like a body of work or whatever. I can't just reuse the same one because I'm obviously doing it to be a little bit more catered to the thing that I'm applying to. When I was on the call, the guy said like, even if you don't get picked, your name is gonna stay in the bank like for future projects. So I'm not gonna be like too stressed about this. And it's also just like, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. I My resume is I think like weak for what they're looking for. So there's not like, there's not much I can do about it. Either they, and apparently also it's like everyone gets, I think, as I understood it, all the artists get shown to the neighborhood and the neighborhood picks. So it might not even matter if my resume is weak. I don't know. Three clear photographs of three or more works, including at least one mural of your design. So it was asking for a mural. <laughs> I have never done a mural before, except for, uh, for my cousin, she's a teacher. I did this painting, but it's like, 
really bad. Not bad as in like I did a bad job. It's just like not like, like I don't think that's what they're looking for. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not a good example. <laughs> I'm like worried to show that, but I think that's better than having no mural example. I think I'm hoping. Dude, applying for art stuff is always so difficult. Like the traditional world makes it so hard. Okay, three or more works. Okay, so I'm gonna show some Florida stuff because that's the designs are all gonna be like Florida-y. So I'm gonna show some pictures of, I totally blank, some Florida-like stuff. So like my egret, the mahi-mahi. Okay, so I'm confused on what this question is asked. It must be describe what you're gonna paint because there's no other option for that and there's no write for your plan, spot to write your plan. I thought it was gonna be like, tell us why to pick you. Like what's your, how are you gonna convince people to not litter? But I think it's literally asking, what is your mural gonna look like? Which they could have just said that. Provide a brief written summary or description of your vision. Yeah, it's asking for, my plan. Okay. Please list two, two to three references for whom you've created art. This is what I'm saying where it's like, you already have to be successful. Like I don't have like, why do I two to three references? Like that's a lot of references. Like I feel like this is so crazy. Also, most of my references are literal companies that I don't have direct emails for. I'll try, I guess I can try to find them. And I especially am, per I just get annoyed when it's like, you already have to be a successful, shut up. You already have to be a successful traditional artist to apply to things. To me, this feels like a very entry level thing. It's a pilot program. They're not paying a whole lot. You know, I, I don't feel like this needs to have a lot of experience. <laughs> this feels entry level. So the fact that you have to have so much is frustrating, but also to be fair, this is a very short application. I think I'm just, fr I, I'm just feeling insecure. I'm just feeling insecure. Hopefully it's good. I've technically got a mural in there. I've got pieces I feel good about. I hope I answered their questions correctly, but I submitted. I have no idea what I'm hearing back. Actually, when am I hearing back? Let me find out. One thing I, last time I did the application, like when I did the application for the Airy Everglades, I realized I was kind of talking a little bit smack. I was a little frustrated with the application and I realized I talked about it in the video and I also told them to check out my YouTube channel. <laughs> so they might've seen me talking smack. So I'm gonna make sure that this video doesn't go out until after I find out if I've been selected. So that way I don't mess myself up. <laughs> so obviously, I got the studio. Today we're painting, I bought a chair already. The studio smells like man's BO. The chair smells like cigarette smoke. Um, but we're painting today, it's a little rough. The walls are like very stained up and gross. So we're just gonna paint it like a, mainly a white color. Um, it's really big, it's like 230 square feet. And we're painting, it's a weekend. It's Saturday like evening. We're hoping to get it done. My parents are helping me. We're hoping to get it done in one day, like tonight, so I can I can have time to dry. I can start moving furniture in. I'm so excited. I'm also exhausted. I'm really, really tired right now. We haven't even started. My energy is low, but trust me, I am so excited. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna film a little bit of the painting process, probably not a lot, uh, but, Let's test it. I just want something that can hold like all, ugh, this might not work. I was thinking it would be bigger and it would hold like literally all of my markers. I think it's gonna work to hold them. It just might not hold all of them. But yeah, okay, that works, that's good. It sticks out a fair bit, but that's good. 
So I also didn't talk to you about it yesterday. So we painted, we did two quick coats. We did not let it dry in between. I just wanted it done. I was so dead and I didn't want to have to paint tomorrow, uh, today. So we left pretty much, we took the tape down yesterday. We left everything else. We just left everything there. So we're going to go back today, check it, make sure it looks good. It was looking a little blue gray, um, especially with the tape up, but I'm excited to see what it looks like in the sun. I'm hoping that it's a white that can kind of be both warm and cool depending on the lighting. So I'm excited to see what it looks like. I'm excited to clean it up. We're gonna bring, I'm putting my, the dining table that I bought, I'm bringing, I'm gonna put that in there. So we'll bring it today um, in case we can put it in there. I'm gonna bring some cleaning supplies, some Windex, magic eraser. We're gonna clean it up a bit, see how it looks. Yesterday, there was also a moment of panic because while we were painting, we were getting really hot, like really hot. We like, it was really bad. And we kept like turning the AC down and turning it down. And we we're like, there's no airflow in here. Like it, there's just no AC. And I was like, oh my God, I'm renting a place in Florida without a AC in the room. Like maybe it's in the building, it's not in the room. Uh, turns out, it just never clicked down for some reason. Right as we were leaving, I was all of a sudden like, it's kind of cold, like I'm chilly. And I like hold my hand up and I was right below the vent. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, there's airflow. So for some reason, it just wasn't clicking on. It had gone back up to 80 by itself. So there is AC. I was really worried about that. I was really scared, but there's AC in the room and it works. So, so far, only good things. I'm really excited. Let's go. Okay, I just got here. Look, look at this. Oh, dang it. Okay, it looks so good. Look how stunning that looks. Oh my God. I can't wait to take the tarp off the floor. It looks great. It's definitely way more gray than it seemed in the store. Let me go over here. Okay. Yeah, the paint definitely looks way more gray than it did in the store. I don't know why. Like I really, it was like borderline white and I thought it was white in the store, but it's definitely gray, but it's still really bright and light that that's fine by me. And I'm really hoping, like my fingers are crossed, I'm supposed to paint it back to as close as possible to the original when it's time for like my lease is up. I'm really hoping that since this is technically a light, he literally said like light gray. This is technically light gray, Maybe he'll let it slide and I won't have to repaint it. It's very echoey right now, but yeah. Oh my God, it looks so good. I was really worried it'd be like streaky and like, I mean, we did the two coats like immediately. So I was worried, but I think it looks really, really good. It's definitely the lighting is like not great in here. Like I'm, I'm backlit right now, but yeah, it's not super well lit. Like, especially at night, the corners feel dark. So you can see like, this is the mess that we left last night. It just looks so good though. Like seeing how well lit and bright it looks just makes me so happy. So at this point, I'm waiting for my parents to get here and then um, we're gonna clean up. I'm gonna do some like cleaning, cleaning. I'm gonna Windex the windows cause they're a little streaky. And the door has like, gunk on the top. I'm gonna try to magic erase that off. And then we get to put the blinds back up and then we're gonna move the table and chairs in here. I'm so, I'm so excited. Oh, somebody's looking up in the window at me. I think it's during the daytime. I'm pretty sure that you can't see in. At night you definitely can. But I'm pretty sure it's like mirrored and that people can't, at least easily, they can't see in. I'm just gonna ask my parents to check. Oh my God, the birds must live in here. I'm gonna wave, see if she, see if she can wave, see if she wave back. <laughs> okay, I gotta go with them in. Somebody spilled coffee, I think.
Okay, friends. I should probably change the angle for... I've got it set up, though. You've seen it. Well, no, you haven't seen it now. You've only seen that I got it. I've already, like, set up stuff, and there will be a video coming out of me, like, getting the studio ready. It's still in the in-between stages. I've got a lot of furniture. No, I've got this giant blank wall. I've got a lot of work to do. But I'm really excited about it, and there will be a couple more studio videos coming. If that's something that interests you, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. I know I'm excited about it. I hope you are. Uh, but thank you guys so much. I really wouldn't be able to do this get a studio without you guys. I really, really appreciate it. The fact that you guys care what I'm doing, support me, buy my stuff. <laughs> it is really cool. It's really, really cool and surreal. And I can't believe this is happening. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for joining me in March. I hope you had a wonderful March. I had a really weird one. Uh, it was good though. I ended up in a good spot, that's for sure. Thanks for being you. <laughs> that's all. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.